What up everybody, Instructor Beats back again here with our probability unit. Today we're going to be talking about using experimental probability. So let's take a chance and look at our objective today. Our objective today, today I will be able to use experimental probability to answer different types of questions. So let's review some of the things we learned last lesson. Which leads us to our key thought for experimental probability. Experimental probability helps us predict what will happen using the data we have collected. So you start off with a theoretical probability. You're, you make that prediction about what you think is going to happen based on the math. And then you do some trials and you come up with an experimental probability. So you actually see what's happening because we know that real life doesn't always match what we predict. Now, as we have a larger sample size, just like we learned last lesson, the experimental probability will get closer and closer to the theoretical probability. We know that. But today we're going to be focusing on using our experimental probability after an experiment has started to predict what we think is going to happen next. All right, so there are going to be two different types of experimental probability questions that we'll be answering today. Now, there's many more, but we're only going to focus on two of them. The first one is comparing two events to see which one would be more likely. Okay, so an example of that might say, Joni caught the ball four out of five times, Brielle caught it three out of six times, if we threw the ball one more time at each of them, who would be more likely to catch the ball? So you could come up with an experimental probability for Joni because she caught it four out of five times, and that's going to equal 80%. You could come up with one for Brielle because she caught it three out of six times, and that is going to equal 50%. Based on our experiment, Joni has caught the ball 80% of the time, and Brielle has caught the ball 50% of the time. So in this type of question, you're just comparing, using your experimental probability, who is going to be closer to 100%. Who's going to be closer on our probability number line to 1, right? Because 1 or 100% would be certain. So for these types of questions, I like to turn them into percents and then compare the percents. Because as you know, you can write probability as a ratio in fraction form, a decimal, or percent. And you can see here that Joni has caught it 80% of the time. So if we threw one more to each of them, I would predict Joni would be more likely to catch the ball. So that one's pretty easy. The math is pretty simple, right? You're just turning things into percents and then comparing them. The second type of question is about making predictions about our second set of trials. So when you start off an experiment, you have a theoretical probability, right? Just like we did with the heads and the tails. We thought that it would be about 50% heads, 50% tails. Then we did the experiment and we stopped after 10. So our first experiment had 10 trials, right? Then what you're going to do is you're going to use your new probability, your new experimental probability, to make predictions about the second set of trials. And that involves a little bit of math. So we're going to do our I do problem involving that type of question. So it says we are going to pop a fair six-sided die 50 times. Using the data we collect, if we rolled it another 200 times, how many times should we expect it to land on an even number? So the first thing I want to do just to have some fun, I want to come up with the theoretical probability of landing on an even number. Now we know it's a fair six-sided die, right? So your sample space or all the, uh, t all the outcomes that are possible is one, two, three, four, five, and six, right? On our die, we have one, two, three even numbers. So our probability is going to be three out of six possible outcomes, or you could simplify that to one half. So we think that we are going to have about one half of our rolls land on one half. Now we need to actually do our experiment, okay? So this is our theoretical probability. Let's do the experiment and then come back and visit it. So we actually did it 100 times because we did it really, really quick, as you can see. Um, so we did 100 instead of 50 just to give us a larger sample size. And you could see when we did that, we landed on 2 17 times. We landed on 4 15 times. And we landed on 6 18 times. When you add that together, that's going to give you the total amount of times you landed on an even number. And the funny thing is, that is exactly 50 times. So our experimental probability for landing on even number after we did it 100 times was 50 
out of 100. That's actually exactly what our theoretical probability had, okay? So we don't need to change it, and that amazes me because I, when I was adding them up, I forgot that it was exactly perfect. So now our new experimental probability is 1 half, okay? So if we rolled it another 200 times, how many times would we expect it to land on an even number? So we're going to use a little bit of math right here because what we just said, 50% of the time, it landed on an even number. So we're going to use a proportion to actually help us solve this. So if we're expecting it based on our experimental probability to land on it 50%, 50 out of 100, and then we're going to roll a total of 200 times, so another 200 times, what is the amount of times it would land on even? Now for this one you probably figured out because you know half of 200 is 100, okay? But um, I wasn't expecting that to happen, it's just the way the math works out. You can always trust the math. And so to solve this, we would actually cross multiply to help us figure this out. So when you cross multiply to help you solve your proportion, you're going to get 100x equals 10,000. And when you solve for x using your algebra knowledge, you can check out our linear equation playlist if you need help. Cross those out, and 100 divided by 1 is 1, so we would say that x equals 100. So if we rolled it another 200 times, based on our experimental probability, we could expect this to be 100. This one worked out perfectly where the theoretical and the experimental probability were exactly the same. That's probably because we had a larger sample size, okay? Um, but you're going to do one of these in our challenge zone, and you're going to have to know how to set it up as a proportion, just like I did, using your percent knowledge and then solving for x. Let's try a U-try problem. So our U-try problem says Sean and Anthony are on the same basketball team, okay? I'm just going to put it on there because I don't feel like fixing that. There we go. One of those little carrot things. Sean has made 23 out of 30 free throws this season, and Anthony has made 14 out of 18. Who do you think is more likely to make their next free throw? Okay, explain your answer. And I want you to explain your answer using our probability number line up here, right? Using these descriptive words. So in other words, what it's asking you is, who's closer to 100% or 1 when you do their probability that they will make the next free throw? Go ahead and pause it, try it out, and then you can check your understanding with me. If you aren't ready for that yet, you can just do this as another we do problem. So hopefully just pause it and at least tried. So here I have Sean, okay? And Sean has shot 30 free throws. That's the total, okay? And he's made 23 out of 30. So the probability, his experimental probability, okay, that he will make the next free throw, so I'll just say make, is 23 30th. So again, I like to do this as percents because it's just easier to compare percents. And I'm going to round it up, but it would be 77%. So he's made 77% of his free throws. So we use that experimental probability to predict that he has a 77% chance of making the next one. Now that up here on my number line is a little bit more than likely. Okay, so that's pretty good. And then you have Anthony. And Anthony hasn't shot as many, right? So he has a smaller sample size. He only has 18, but he's made 14 out of 18. So his experimental probability, okay, of making it is going to be 14 eighteenths. And again, I'm going to have to round up because I round up to the nearest hole for this one. If I round this one up just to make it a little bit easier, he has a 78% chance of making his next free throw. Again, we use the experimental prob probability to make that prediction. So your answer would be Anthony, because Anthony was further towards 100%. So Anthony is more likely to make his next free throw. Some of you might have been thinking on a higher level though. You're thinking, okay, well, I know you said the, the more we have of the sample size, the better our experimental probability would be. So Sean's shot 30 free throws and Anthony's shot 18. And just because I, I feel bad about that, look, if we did not round it to the nearest 10th, his would have been 77.7 .7, and Anthony's would have been 76.6. .6. Okay, so even if you didn't round it, Anthony still had a better chance. But some of you might be thinking, okay, Sean has a bigger sample size, so I know that percentage, that experimental probability is more accurate than Anthony's. Okay, and that's a perfectly good explanation, but for this, if we're using the numbers, if we're using the experimental probability of what we have, we would say Anthony is more likely to make his free throw.
now it's time to enter the challenge zone. So challenge zone, if you have not been with us, this is where you take the basic knowledge that we're doing and you try to take it to the next level. You're going to have to bring something with you to the challenge zone to be able to answer this question. So it says Shayla has a pack of four marbles. Each is a different color. Okay, green, yellow, blue, and orange. She picks a marble out randomly without looking, records the color. Okay, so just like we had our data sheet for our experiment, she's doing the same thing. Then she puts that marble back in the bag, okay? And she draws out another marble randomly without looking. She does this 30 times and stops. The table below shows her data. So she did it 30 times, and she pulled out yellow with a frequency of 6, green with a frequency of 7, blue 9 times, which is what frequency means for a frequency chart, and orange 8 times. If she picks another 225 marbles, so if she increases her sample size, how many times should she expect the spinner to stop on yellow? So this is asking us to use our experimental probability knowledge. So go ahead and pause it. Try to solve it if you can. If not, it's okay. We'll go over it together and then push play when you're ready to check your work. So hopefully you just paused it and now you're just checking your work to see, okay, did I master this challenge zone question? So I know the frequency was 30 times. I know it's asking me about yellow, okay? So the first thing I wanna do is, what is my experimental probability from the 30 times of landing on yellow? All right. Now, typically people don't put that EXP. But I just did that so you can know that we're not talking about theoretical probability. Okay. Teacher choice. Deal with it. And so I know right now that she did 30 trials. Okay. And that she landed on yellow six. All right. So the relative frequency that she landed on yellow is 0.2. Okay. So we can say that the experimental probability of her landing on yellow would be 20%. So we are expecting now, no matter how many more times she's done it, even if she draws another thousand, 20% of those would be yellow. That's what our data right now is telling us. So if we pick another 225, how many times should she expect the spinner to stop on yellow? So we think that it should be about 20%. Okay, so if we did another, I'll just put a yellow Y there for yellow. Okay, if we did another 225, how many times could we expect it to land on yellow? Okay, what is the probability that that's going to happen? Well, we know that our experimental probability told us should happen about 20% of the time or six out of every 30. So if we use that same ratio, okay, there's two different ways we can do this. We could think about percents, or we could set up a proportion. Now, I'm going to set up a uh, proportion for this. So I know because it was 20%, okay, that's going to be 20 out of 100 is what we would expect it to land on yellow, okay? And that's going to equal our new total to be 225, and we're looking for how many times we'll actually land on yellow. So to solve for proportions, we're going to cross multiply here get 4,500. We're going to just solve for X using our algebra knowledge. And we're going to say that the number of times it will land, cross those out, use a shortcut, is going to be 45. If we rolled it another 225 times, we're expecting it to land on yellow 45 of those times. We used our experimental probability to help us figure that out. Thank you so much for checking us out today. We really appreciate it. We uh, would love for you to comment. Let us know where you watched from. Uh, we would love for you to join our Instructor Beats family by so clicking the red button and subscribing. You can follow us on all our social media accounts. Check out our probability song. We appreciate you. Thank you so much. Instructor Beats, out.